book that I have. I don't remember what it's called. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my June wrap up part 2 for 2021. I read a total of 21 books this month but one of them is a textbook that I had to read front to back for one of my college courses which I'm not going to talk about because nobody cares about that so I'm going to be splitting this up into four different parts. This is part two like I said so if you're interested in the other parts of the wrap up I will leave them down below when they're uploaded and without further ado let us get started. Wow. So the first book that I have to talk about is The Ivies by Alexa Dawn. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows a group of 5 girls from Clifton Academy who call themselves The Ivies. They have all made a pact to apply to specific Ivy League schools to better their chances of getting into one of them. They will stop at nothing in order to get into their chosen Ivy League school, including murder. And it's like the story of that. I think that this was an enjoyable read for what it was, although I don't think that it was anything particularly memorable. I do think that it would make like a really fun TV show and it would do really well, but like I said, not really anything super spectacular. I did really like the boarding school vibes of this. Boarding schools are one of my favorite settings to read from. So if you guys know any like boarding school books, then please let me know down below because I would love to read more of them. The book does go by very quickly. I read it in one sitting. I will say that I gave it a three out of five stars, mainly because I found a lot of the main characters to be pretty annoying and a lot of the characters in the book were one-dimensional and none of of them really had any development by the end of the story but overall it was fun while it lasted so three out of five stars. Next I read Aetherbound by E.K. Johnson and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Penn Harlow who has spent her entire life on a spaceship being told that she is worthless and unwanted. So during a routine layover she decides that she is going to escape and so she hides out in Brannock Station. She ends up being discovered by the Brannock twins and they all hatch a plan together to get out of their predetermined destinies and it's like the story of that. After I finished reading this book, I honestly didn't know how I felt about it. I thought that the premise and idea of it was really cool, but I don't think it was executed very well. I think that the idea of the gene mage talent was really interesting and that definitely intrigued me, but a lot of the plot points surrounding that made me really uncomfortable and I was not a fan of it. The beginning of the book was basically just this giant info dump and then it was just the main character telling us events that happened. The book is a very quick read though and I did finish it in two sittings so I mean that was a plus but I wouldn't say it was necessarily a good book so I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Ace of Spades and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved this book. So this book follows Devon and Chimaka who are the only two black students attending Nevis Private Academy. They have lived very different high school lives but they are both named senior prefix for the year and that's when a anonymous texter named Aces starts sending out text messages which incriminate Devon and Chimaka in various scandals. Although they weren't friends before, the two decide that they are going to join forces in order to take down Aces and stop them before their futures are taken from them and it's like the story of that. Like I said, I loved this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I love these characters and the comparison to Get Out meets Gossip Girl was so spot on. I really liked the mystery behind trying to figure out who was behind Aces and how Chiumaka and Devon were going to stop them from spreading more rumors about them. The book also talks about a lot of deeper topics that I wasn't exactly expecting from this. It talks about homophobia, elitism, white supremacy, racism in a really well done way in my opinion. I actually listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did such an incredible job with these characters. Like the tension and the suspense of this book was palpable and I could not stop turning the pages just waiting to figure out what was going on and who was behind aces. It was just such an enjoyable read to me. 
I definitely recommend if you have not checked this book out yet, which I'm pretty sure more than half of booktube has read it already, then take this as your sign to pick it up because it is just such a good read. So yeah, five out of five stars. I loved this one. Next up, I read Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this one follows Charisse and Kieran, who have been rivals since they were teenagers. They find it absolutely unbearable to be near each other. They find themselves both back in Trinidad, where they are to be the best man and maid of honor for their friend's wedding. This means that they are going to have to work together in order to pull off the dream wedding, and they didn't exactly expect to fall eat for each other along the way and it's like the story of that. The premise of this book was just chef's kiss. I absolutely loved it. I also loved how Charisse had her own successful baking business and Kieran had his own hustle as well. Kieran is very successful in the music industry as a songwriter and producer and so that already makes Charisse very hesitant towards him because her previous relationship had ended poorly with somebody very deep in the music industry. I think that the banter between Charisse and Kieran was the best part of the story. I just found them to be so funny and I also really liked how their relationship was very slow burn. It was an enemies to lovers romance and not to mention a childhood enemies to lovers romance so I was absolutely here from it right from the beginning. I think that Kieran is probably one of my all-time favorite love interests that I've ever read about. He is just so sweet and caring and always asking Charisse if she is okay with what he's doing. I also just love how he is secretly crushing on Charisse for their entire like teenage years. I just think it is so sweet and adorable. I also loved how he was a bisexual king and it was just so casually placed into the story. I just think that we need more men who are bisexual in books. We need that representation and I absolutely loved it in Kieran. The biggest complaint that I probably have about the book, which is why I think I only gave it a 3.5, is that Charisse made me very angry on multiple occasions about the way that she treated Kieran only because he was in the music industry. Unless I like missed or didn't realize some sort of backstory about why she doesn't like him from childhood, the only reason I could find that she didn't like him was because he was in the music industry and it just really bothered me. I was also a big fan of the side characters in this. I thought they were all so wonderful, especially Remy, Charisse's best friend. I just think that every side character had their own unique personality and were just so well-rounded and I'm really hoping for like a spin-off with Remy because I would love to see their story too but they were just wonderful. Overall this is definitely like a steamy perfect read for the summertime so definitely check this one out. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then the last book that I have for this part of the wrap-up is The Other Black Girl. This is by Zakia Dahlia Harris and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 26 year old Nella who is the sole black employee at Wagner Books. She faces multiple microaggressions throughout her day. So when Hazel, another black woman, is hired, she is extremely excited to have someone at the cubicle next to her who just gets it but then some very uncomfortable situations happen in the office and Nella begins to think that Hazel is is trying to befriend her for ulterior motives. Then some threatening letters start showing up on Nella's desk and she begins to think that maybe it is Hazel leaving them trying to climb the corporate ladder. So Nella decides to start investigating who Hazel actually is and she discovers some pretty shocking secrets and it's the story of that. I enjoyed this book but I didn't love it. I think that it discuss some very important topics, especially surrounding racism that need to be talked about. This felt very similar to When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, but instead of the neighborhood setting, it's told in an office setting. I think that Nella was a very intriguing character and I did really like learning more about her as the story progressed, although I think that it is a very slow burn story and it got boring very quickly. I think that it did start off very strong, but then it just kind of went downhill for me from there. I did really like how we got different perspectives though. It wasn't just Nella's story, we got views from other people, which I think was a very interesting way to tell the story. I think that this book is definitely one that you need to be in the mood to read, and I don't think I was in the mood for it, so that was just kind of disappointing for me. 
I also think that the comparison to The Devil Wears Parada is a little bit of a stretch, but I can definitely see the Get Out comparison. But yeah, overall, like, it was alright. I do think it's an important book to read, but I think I just wasn't in the mood for it at the time, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part 2 of my June wrap-up 2021. If you want to see the other wrap-ups, I will leave them down below once they're uploaded. And you guys can check them out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!